Good morning. How majestic is his name in all the earth. It's so glad 
to see you today. Thank you for being in the house of the Lord on this beautiful Lord's Day. Um, as I get started with a few announcements, there are registration attendance pads in the pews. If you'd be so kind to sign those, pass those down. Uh, not only can you find out who's on the pew with you, in case you don't know, uh, you can also uh, communicate anything you'd like to to the church with that as you're doing that. Uh, why, again, while you're doing that, a few announcements. Uh, a couple of meetings tonight. Uh, we think it's time to get back on the mission field. And so we're planning another mission trip to Honduras. If you're interested in finding out about that or about mission trips in general, I invite you to come to the Family Life Center banquet room at 4 o'clock this afternoon. Uh, meet Dennis uh, there, Dennis Baggett, and uh, he would, would talk about the trip and the situation there. Uh, if you're interested and can't come tonight, just give him a call. His telephone number is in the bulletin. Also, speaking about missions, we're still in need of someone to coordinate the entire mission team of the church, the mission committee of the church. We've got the various components covered, but we need a coordinator uh, to that. If you're interested in that at all, if you'd let me know, I would appreciate that very, very, very much. Also tonight, we're at administrative council meeting. If you're on the administrative council, you should have gotten an email or a note about that. But everybody's invited. Uh, tonight at 5 o'clock, we'll hear a report about what's been going on in the church as we are getting back to, uh, relatively back to normal anyways. And also a couple of decisions that have to be made. I invite you to come tonight at 5 o'clock. We'll be in the fellowship hall, which is directly below us here. Um, I'm excited to remind or let everybody know that men's breakfast is resuming in August. I'm excited about that. I've missed that so much over the last year and a half. But we'll get back to the first Saturday of each month. Uh, meet about 8 o'clock in the morning for breakfast and a program. And all the men uh, are invited. Uh, invite your friends. You don't have to be a member of the church. Just come. The men's fellowship time is a lot of fun and it's a good, good time to be together. Also, you notice that once again, we're partnering with area churches and organizations for Bartow to give a kid a chance. If you'd like to make a donation, uh, that would be great. We figured out it costs about 50 bucks to sponsor a child, but any amount would be greatly uh, appreciated. Just make sure you mark your, your donation, your check, uh, give a kid a chance, or uh, a GKC, and we appreciate that. Uh, that's all the announcements I have. Again, thank you uh, for being here in this place. We want to begin by calling ourselves to uh, worship today. Jim's not here, so we'll get to, everybody gets to be the choir today. So let's sing together 334 if you need the words. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. Remain seated as we sing. Sweet, sweet. Almighty God, how sweet it is to be here, basking in your presence and in, in the midst of your spirit. And may your spirit just fill each of us, Lord, just to overflowing, so that we might worship you in spirit and truth. 
and all that's said and done in this place may be pleasing to you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our opening hymn is Victory in Jesus. It's 370. I invite you to stand and let's sing all the verses. 370. God's word says, if we believe in our heart and profess with our lips that Jesus Christ is Lord, we shall be saved. And so what a wonderful and powerful thing it is to stand to our feet and to profess our faith before God and one another. So I ask you, Christians, what do you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. 
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and stood at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From then, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. children's time at the altar and before you're seated would you just turn and wave at each other air hug whatever welcome each other to church today So glad to say. Suppose if I hear some music. So <laughs> I thought the angels were coming. Suppose I tell you, uh, if I ask you a question, if I ask you, can God do anything? What would you say? You say yes, wouldn't you? Yeah, I think most everybody would say yes. But you know what? That's really not true. There's some things that God cannot do. And you know what? It says in the Bible that God is truth. So if God is truth, do you think God can tell a lie? I don't think he can. I don't think God will lie. Maybe he could, but I don't think he would because he's truth. And so if he's truth, then he can't lie, can he? Because he always tells the truth. So when God tells the truth, so God makes promises to us. And when God makes promises to us, that means that they're always true and they're always real. You know, lots of people make promises to us. Some people say, hey, I'm going to give you this, uh, this baseball card or I'm going to give you this. And sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. But when God promises, it's always true. So when God says, I love you, he can't lie. He loves us. When God says, I'll never leave you or forsake you, it's true. He'll never leave us or forsake us. When God says, one day you can come to heaven and be with me, then that's true. One day we, we can. So remember that God can't lie to us and God's promises are always true. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for always being truthful to us. Thank you, Lord, for never lying to us. And thank you, Lord, for your promises that you'll love us forever. Lord, we just give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. I got some candy if you want to come get some candy. There's some Skittles and some other things in there. Yes, sir? Okay. Everybody got some? Okay. All right. Okay, go with that. Your seats are going with Miss Hannah. Very good. Let's go at this time to our Lord together in prayer. And we'll spend a few moments just praying silently as we go to God with what's on our hearts this day. Let's pray together. Thank you. 
Oh, how wonderful. Oh, how marvelous is your love for us. Lord, thank you. Thank you for being our Lord and our God. Thank you for caring about us and loving us and always being there for us. So, Lord, we come to this place to say thank you, to worship, to hear a word from you this day. Lord, for, for many, it's been a, a long and hard week. Lord, we watch the news, we read the, the papers, we look at our news feeds, and Lord, sometimes we wonder what is going on. Lord, we need you now more than ever. And we ask, Lord, that you would direct our hearts and our minds towards you, that you would fill us with your spirit, bringing refreshing renewal, peace, joy. You remind us in your word that you are faithful to carry our burdens. You tell us that you will renew our strength and that you promise to give us rest as we come to you. So, Lord, forgive us. Forgive us for the times when we've worked so hard to be self-sufficient, forgetting our need for you, trying to live apart from your spirit. Forgive us for letting fear and worry control our minds, for allowing pride and selfishness to wreak havoc over our lives. Forgive us for not following your ways and for living distant from your presence. Thank you for your ways are far greater than our ways and your thoughts far deeper than our thoughts. Thank you that you had a plan to redeem us. Thank you that you make all things new. Thank you that your face is towards the righteous. You're close to the brokenhearted. You hear our prayers. You know our hearts. Thank you for your daily powerful presence in our lives that we can be assured that no matter what we're facing, your heart is towards us. Your eyes are over us. Your ears are open to us. Thank you that you surround us with a favor as with a shield and we're safe in your care. So Lord, we come here. We give praise and honor to you and for your ways which are righteous and true. We worship you because you're holy and just. And we declare that your love stands firm forever and your loving kindness endures forever. That, Lord, is what we're counting on. That is what we know to be true. And that's what we rejoice in this day. Lord, be with those who stand in special need, Lord. We have so many of our friends and family who are in hospitals and suffering and recovering or facing surgeries. Lord, just be with them. May your blessings be upon them. And be with us all. And hear our prayer, Lord, as we pray with one voice the prayer you taught us to pray as we say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. tell you something. Um, I've sang for a long time and I enjoy singing and I, I'm a note man. Sometimes the words kind of escape me and sometimes I make up words. Well, I've got the bulletin thing. I'm going to look at it a little bit while I sing. And these are good words in this song and I don't want to miss them. Dan Forrest did a great arrangement of Arise My Soul Arise. And I hope you enjoy it because I try to do the best I can because there's a better chance of a blessing if I do my best for the Lord. my soul arise cast off thy guilty fears the bleeding sacrifice 
sacrifice on my behalf appears. Before the throne my surety stands, before the throne my surety stands. My name is written on his hands. My name is written on his hands. Five bleeding wounds he bears, received on Calvary. They pour effectual prayers, they strongly plead for me. Forgive him, oh, forgive, they cry. Forgive him, oh, forgive, they cry. Let not this ransom sinner die. Yet not this ransom sinner die. is reconciled his pardoning voice I hear he owns me for his child I shall no longer fear with confidence I now draw nigh with confidence I now draw nigh and Abba, Father, cry, Father, cry, arise, my soul, arise, and Father, Abba, Father, cry. Alan, thank you, Brian. Appreciate that. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from the Epistle to the Ephesians. First chapter, begin with the ninth verse, and I'll read on over to the twentieth verse. Did you hear God's word this morning? He has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time, to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things, according to his counsel and will, so that we who were the first to set our hopes on Christ might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance towards redemption as God's own people to the praise of his glory. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints and for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your own heart enlightened, you may know what it is, the hope to which he has called you, 
What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power? This is the word of God for the people of God. Our thanks be to God. So I ask you, how is it with your soul today? How is it with your soul today? Are you right with God today? Are you, are you pretty sure you're right with God today? Do you hope you're right with God today? Are you sure you're right with God today? There's a difference in all of that. You know, I can, I can remember growing up and the preacher would give the invitation. And the preacher would say something like, in the church I grew up in, the preacher would say something like this. If you to, to die tonight, are you sure that you're going to heaven? Are you sure that you're going to heaven? And I would think to myself, well, I, I hope so. And, and the adults around me, you know, they would look at each other and say, well, I'm, I'm, I hope so too. I, we're, we're counting on it. We're, we're hoping so. And I, 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 the preacher would say, no, no, no. You have to know that you know that you know that you'll be in heaven. If not, you don't have the, the proper faith. And again, the adults around me and in, in my own heart and mind, we'd say something like, well, that sounds kind of pompous. That's a little presumptuous. Just a little conceited and, 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 and self-righteous, don't you think? To say that I know that I know that, that I'm going to be in heaven to, today, that I deserve heaven, that, that I've lived a life so that I deserve to to go to heaven, all that seems a, a little self-righteous to me. But then I had an epiphany. And I realized what the pastor was trying to say. So here's the deal. If you expect to get to heaven on your goodness, on the life that you led, on the decisions that you're making, on the love you have in your heart, not only are you presumptuous, you're going to be eternally disappointed. See, as the song goes, because of my sin, I owe a debt I cannot pay. But Christ paid a debt he did not owe. Do we all understand here today that it's not my goodness that I'm counting on? It's not how I live my life that I'm counting on. But it's all about the love and grace of Christ that opens heaven's doors for me. See, I can say I'm going to heaven. And I'm sure of that. But not because of, uh, uh, of anything I did or, or, or you did. But because of Christ. And far from, from being conceited or, or, or self-righteous, none of us can boast about that. None of us can. None of us can say it, it, it's because of, of, of my righteousness. None of us can, can lift ourselves up or, or conversely uh, drag anybody else down for their life. What we take pride in it's in the love and mercy and grace and forgiveness and sacrifice of Christ for all of us sinners. And of that, we can be assured. Assurance. I'm going to talk today a little bit about assurance. What can you be assured of? Assurance is pretty awesome, isn't it? It's good to be sure. Assurance that when we go to the doctor, he's confident and he's doing the right things for us. Assurance that the foods that we're going to consume aren't, aren't con con contaminated. Assurance that when we sit down in a chair, it's going to hold us up and it's not going to collapse and we're going to fall to the ground. But most importantly of all, assurance that our sins are forgiven in Christ. We need the assurance of a loving and a forgiving God. You know, several years ago they did a poll and the favorite traditional hymn that was selected, you know what it was? Blessed Assurance. Blessed Assurance. We need that. You know who wrote that? Fanny Crosby wrote that hymn. Fanny Crosby was an interesting lady. You know about her, don't you? 
How when she was just a, a, a baby, the doctor uh, treated her poorly and, and, and ruined her eyes and, and caused her to, to go blind when, when she was just a, a, a baby. She lived her whole life totally blind, yet she began to write hymns when she was six years old. When she was nine years old, she wrote this hymn. You've probably never heard it, but she wrote this hymn. Here are the words. Oh, what a happy soul am I. Although I cannot say I am resolved that in this world contented I will be. How many blessings I enjoy that other people don't to weep and sigh. Because I'm blind, I cannot and I won't. During her lifetime, she wrote some 8,000 hymns, but, but blessed assurance, sister, most well known, I think. See, God wants you to have that assurance today. God wants our assurance to be founded on faith, what Paul calls the confident hope. So I ask you, what can you have confident hope in today? What can you be assured of this morning? Let me suggest a few things. First of all, we can be assured that we are part of God's plan. And this is the plan, another translation of the scripture I read. This is the plan. At the right time, he brings everything together under the authority of Christ, everything in heaven and on earth. And furthermore, because we are united with Christ, we've received an inheritance with God, for he chose us in advance and makes everything work out according to his plan. We're part of God's plan. Did you know that? God chose you to be part of God's plan. That's good news. More good news. Do you know that you're a pleasure to God? God takes pleasure in you. Even better news. Do you know that God has written you into his will as an heir? What does that mean? It means that we're not part of, of, of an accident of, of, of hapless, mindless happenstance. You and I are here by divine design, and every one of us has purpose and meaning in life. God had a plan before creation, and he wasn't forced from that plan by Christ's rede rejection and, and, and death. That was the fulfillment of his plan. If you are in Christ, you are part of God's eternal purpose, his divine design. You know, sometimes I read that and I, and I say, you got to be kidding me. I'm, this is my life is part of God's design. I wonder about that sometimes. When we face hardship and, and pain and, and, and tragedy, how can this be part of God's design, part of God's plan? Am I really a part of, of God's eternal purpose? Even when my life is so mundane, even when my life is so annoying to me sometimes, is all that part of God's purpose? His divine plan, sometimes I can't see it. I, I'll give you an example. I got in my car the other day and went to start it and uh, thought it sounded funny. So I got to the church. I should have known better. But when I, I got into uh, my car again and started, the battery was dead. Battery. Fortunately, Al was here. Al jumped, jumped me off and, and I, I went to the, to the garage and and had the battery uh, replaced, you know, and I called Peggy to come pick me up. And so Peggy came, picked me up, and, and her car, and we drove back. And Peggy said, Oh, by the way, something weird. I said, What's that? She says, When I started my car today, it said uh, battery low, replace battery soon. I said, Oh, great, on your car, huh? So I took her car and I put it in the shop, and I took my car out. And as I was driving it home, I hit a railroad track. All of a sudden, my steering wheel went crazy. So I drove back to the car dealership. I left my car, got her car, and I said, oh, I'll get my truck. Well, oh, yeah, my truck's in Macon. My son has my truck. So that night we drove to Macon, picked up my truck, and came back, and Peggy said, you realize there's no taillights on your truck, you know? So I took my truck, drove it back to the shop, picked up my car, and, had the steer, and, and drove it back, and then my truck's still at the, sh at the sh And I said, this is part of God's eternal plan? Really? I have no idea how any of that turns out into God's eternal uh, plan. It's hard to imagine. But then I thought about a story. I heard just a silly story I heard years ago about a gardener who talked to his plants. 
And, and he talked, he had some, his favorite plant was some, some roses. They were almost, almost blue with lavender highlights. And, and the gardener came to the garden, he went to that rose bush, and he said to the roses, he said, you know, I'm going to use you today. And they perked up and they said, we're ready, use us as you will. He said, well, I've got to cut you off the bush. And they said, oh, don't do that. If you cut us off the bush, we'll, we'll last for a while, but we'll wilt too soon. No, 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 leave us on the bush. Don't cut us off the bush. And the gardener said, i got to do it. And the rose says, please, please don't do it. And the gardener cut them off the bush. The gardener had a plan. He took them and made a beautiful bouquet for a very sick child in a hospital. And the story goes that the roses rejoiced as they saw the joy that they brought to that very sick child. And the joy that they brought to that child's family. And the joy that they received also from surrendering to his plan. See, God's plan for us may not be easy. It may cost us something. It may be beyond what we think we can do. And it may be certainly beyond our understanding. It may just seem crazy to us. But be assured, be assured that you're part of God's plan. And we'll find joy in the surrender. The second thing, be assured that you are participants in God's promise. You participate in God's promise. Again, our scripture said he identified you as his own by giving you the Holy Spirit that he promised you long ago. And that spirit is God's guarantee that he will give you the inheritance he promised and that he has purchased us to be his own people. What are your favorite promises that God has made you? For God so loved the world that if you believe in him, you won't perish but have everlasting life. That you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. That he'll never leave you or forsake you. What are your favorite promises that God, you, you, you inherit those promises and they're true. Make a, a file of them for a difficult time. There's a promise for every human need. Seek them out, file them away. So you can call on them when you need them. And remember, people make promises, but some of them don't intend to keep them. Sometimes they forget them. Sometimes they can't keep them. Sometimes they change their, their mind. But God cannot lie. His word is faithful and, and true. And thirdly, be assured that we're purchased for God's possession. God bought me and God bought you. When you believed in Christ, our scripture says, he identified you as his own by giving you the Holy Spirit who he promised long ago. The Spirit is God's guarantee that he will give us the inheritance he promised and that he has purchased us to be his own people. He did this so we could praise and glorify him. In other words, we've been purchased by God. Now, now remember, it cost Christ his life. You know the name Jonathan Edwards? Jonathan Edwards actually was related to Sam Jones. But Jonathan Edwards was a great evangelist. He said something one day, I want you to hear, and I want you to, to, to chew on for a little bit. Write, write it down if you want to. But this is what Jonathan Edwards said some years ago. God is both the purchaser and the price. God is both the purchaser and the price. And then he goes on. For Christ, who is God, purchased the blessings for us by offering himself up as the price of our salvation. So God bought us. God purchased us. But the price was himself. He is both the purchaser and the price. He purchased us by offering himself up as Jesus Christ as the price of our salvation. We belong to him. And the Lord knows that those who are his and all who belong to the Lord will turn away from evil. In a sense, we're not our own to claim. It's, you know, when we say, oh, that's my money or this is my life or this is my body or, or, or this, is, this is my, it's not true. We're to glorify God by how we live. God knows us and God claims us as his own. That's why we can sing blessed assurance Jesus is mine. Oh what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation purchase of God born of his spirit washing his blood. 
But you, know, you, you might say, you know, I, you know, preacher, all this sounds kind of crazy to me. I, I really don't want to live my life that way. I mean, this is my body. This is my life. These are my rules. And, and you got every right to choose that. You don't have to accept that today. You don't have to accept what Christ has done for you. You don't have to live that way. You get to choose. But if that's the way you choose to reject the love and grace of God, you'll miss out on the greatest blessing of your life. The greatest blessing of living in God's spirit. Living in God's strength. Living in God's joy. Living in God's purpose. There's a little girl. True story. She was in the foster care system. She was living with a family. They were, they were okay family. They didn't abuse her. They, you know, they, they, they treated her, her well. They, they cared for her and took care of her needs. But it was very clear she wasn't part of their biological family. You know, they ate together and did things together. But whenever they did something special, they go on a trip, they go on vacation, they would take their foster child and they, they would put their foster child with a, one of their relatives to look after. And then they would go and they would do their, their family, family business. One day, the child became eligible for adoption and she was adopted. She was adopted into a, a beautiful a family. And she became part of that family and she was a sweet child and, and a good child. And one day, not long after she got adopted, the father said, hey, I've got good news for everybody. Kids gather around. They gather around and said, guess what we're going to do? We're going to go to Disney World. I'm going to take everybody to Disney World. And we're going to have a great time there. Well, almost immediately, that little girl turned into a brat. I mean, she was obstinate. She was ill-mannered. She was unreasonable about everything. Finally, the father couldn't stand it. And a few days before heading to Florida, Dad pulled her into his lap to talk to her about all of this. And she said this. She said, I know what you're going to do. You're not going to take me to Disney World, are you? Her misbehavior suddenly made sense. She knew she couldn't be good enough to be included with the family. So she had tried that and failed time and time again. Now she was acting out of her anger inappropriately. But Dad said this to her. Dad said, sweetie, is this trip something I said we're going to do as a family? She said, yes. And he said, are you part of our family? And she said, yes. Then he said, then you're going with us. Yeah, sure, there are some consequences that come along that I have to impose upon you to help you remember what's right and what's wrong and what's good and what's dangerous. But you're part of our family and we don't leave anybody behind. And they went as a family. In the hotel room that evening, a very different child was there. And when bedtime rolled around, they prayed together. And she climbed up in her daddy's lap and said, Daddy, I got to go to Disney World, not because I was good, but because I'm yours. You see? See, we get the blessings of, of, of God, the blessings of, of heaven, not because we're good. We're not. But because we're God's. God blesses us not because we're good, but because we are his. And all this is so important to understand. Why is it important to understand? One more story and I'll be done. Dr. Jackson was a missionary. Neat guy. Lovely man, actually. Good preacher and caring heart. He told the story of how he was uh, on, the, on the field and somebody had given him a car, but it, it wouldn't crank. It, it wouldn't start. But the guy pr knew it would run. It was, and some of you may not understand this, but most of you probably do. It had a clutch, and, and so what he would do, he'd park it on a hill, you know. And, and, and so he'd roll it down a hill, and as the car picked up speed, he'd pop the clutch, and the engine would roar to life, and, and he could, could use it. It ran okay, just wouldn't, just wouldn't crank, you know. Just wouldn't crank. And so he used it that way for, for several years. So finally, when he got called back home, a new missionary came, and, 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 and Dr. Jackson came and says, you know, so we got a car, he says, but, uh, he said, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't crank. He said, but it'll run if you pop the clutch and, you know, if you bump start it, it'll run pretty, pretty good. And the other missionary who knew more, a lot more about cars than Dr. Jackson did looked in the hood and said, huh, he said, I wonder if the fact that this battery cable's not hooked up has anything to do with it. 
So I reached down there with a, with a, a wrench and, and he hooked up the battery cable and he got in the driver's seat and boom, started right up. Started right up. For years, Dr. Jackson had needless trouble, but the trouble had become routine. The power was there all the time. It was just that loose connection that kept him from putting that power to work. And I say to you, stay connected to God to remind you that you are part of his plan, that you're included in his promise, that you're one of his own, that you're protected by his power. And all that blessed assurance will be yours. Perfect submission. All is at rest. I and my Savior, happy and blessed, watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his goodness, lost in his love. It's a pretty good way to live your life, isn't it? Filled with his goodness and lost in his love. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Our closing hymn is Blessed Assurance. Blessed assurance. It's hymn number 369. I invite you to stand and sing. The altar's open. If anybody would like to come and spend a moment in prayer, you come too. Let's stand as we sing. Savior Jesus Christ, may the love of God and may the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and abide with you and may you go forth from this place with that blessed assurance and may you be blessed by God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.